Hey guys, Tom Morkis here, and today I wanted to walk you through Amazon Kindle SEO, and I'll dig into what exactly that is, but uh, today's presentation is a little bit special too because um, this is normally a type of presentation that, um, that I do for Publishers Empire students, so you can go to publishersempire.com, and this is the quality and level of content that they receive, but I wanted to share this one a little bit more publicly because a lot of people... Um, I think give misinformation about Amazon uh, SEO. Um, a lot of the stuff specifically geared toward um, Amazon Kindle SEO, so for books and stuff like that, is also particularly wrong. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, kind of an insider look at real Amazon Kindle SEO. And this is based on a couple dozen books that I've launched in the past year and kind of getting pretty darn good at this stuff. So I've done quite a bit. And these are um, these are big time big time sellers and I can show you some examples too later on of examples of kind of people kind of using these same tricks and hacks to manipulate the system so I'm gonna ask that um, you know where great response great power comes great responsibility right and so I'm gonna ask that uh, that if you you use this resource that you do it honorably and ethically and um, you don't become one of those spammers that's kind of gaming the Amazon system because I'm really tired of them this this tutorial is to show the honest authors out there how to better rank in Amazon so that the right readers can find their book. So I'm not trying to game the system here. I'm just trying to give you a tool and some instructions here that you can use to um, get your book into the hands of the people who want it. Um, and, and again, with the assumption that you're one, writing a good book, and two, it deserves to be read. So these, this instruction, this block of instruction will show you how to do this. And again, this is the type of content that's normally reserved uh, just for my Publishers Empire students. But because Amazon SEO and a lot of, you know, it's one of those, SEO is one of those things that people get really um, confused by easily. And then um, internet marketers will take advantage of it. So I'm going to show you the insider look at a publisher, that's me, um, and in search and publishing, my company, what we do to use Amazon SEO, how we take advantage of Amazon SEO um, to rank higher in Amazon's search engine, um, and I'm going to break it down step by step for you. So let's get to it. So the best place to start with SEO is kind of a definition of what exactly it is, because I think it means different things to different people, people interpret it differently. So even if you know what SEO stands for, which is search engine optimization, uh, what does that actually mean? So SEO is a term popularized because there are search engines like Google uh, in the world where people go and type in a query, type in a question, or type in a uh, description or an item or a keyword or something like that, and up pops uh, results on the other end. So I input a question and then I get back a result. Okay, And so in Google, it's like saying, uh, where is Aspen, Colorado? And then Google, because it's getting smarter and smarter, it tells me, it'll show me maybe Google Maps, it'll give me maybe a Wikipedia article on it, etc., etc. Now, okay, so that's the, kind of the basics. Well, Amazon is the number one retail search engine in the world. So if you think about that for a second, Google gets the most traffic and they get the most searches, but Amazon gets the most searches in a retail setting. What does that mean? It means, and we'll dig into this in a second, why this is so important. But it means people go to Amazon to actually buy things. Yeah, some people do it to actually like research some stuff. But if you're on Amazon, the average person is on Amazon to purchase something. And this is relevant because it dictates how we optimize um, what we put into our descriptions, how we upload our books, and so on and so forth, and things like that, and kind of uh, factor in our marketing to make sure that we are providing something that people will actually buy because that's what Amazon cares about. So I want to get to that in just a second. But next I want to talk a little bit about um, Amazon specific SEO and how it's a little bit different than, than Google. So the reason I want to split that up, so it was a brief overview of like search engine optimization, okay? Uh, something is searched and you get a result. And in Amazon, you search something and you get a result. And the results you're getting are things you can actually purchase. Amazon's goal is to keep you on their site. Whereas Google's goal is click-through rate. So they measure two different things. They're both search engines, but they both have a different goal. Google just wants you to click through anything. They get paid on, on click-through rate and advertising through that. Um, and, and, they, and then they can optimize that by, by providing better results so that you're more likely to click through it, right? Well, now transfer that over to, to Amazon, where it's a retail, what they want are purchases. So what they're going to do is they're going to make sure that 
whatever based on their they have these algorithms in the back end, which we'll get into a little bit, but I won't, I won't get into the nitty gritty on that, but I will say this basically, that Amazon will rank things based on how well they're selling. And so there's a number of factors that go into this, and that's what today's instruction is all about. But if you think about that for a second, that means they're not going to put something at the top of the list. When you search a, key, search a keyword, we'll get into keywords in a second as well. When you search something in Amazon and you, you see that the first three or four or 10 items are irrelevant, you're not going to buy and you click through to the next page, but you buy something there. If enough people do that, guess what happens? The ranking shift. It's 100% or I'd say maybe 80% based on um, sales. Well, it's 100% based on sales fundamentally, but then there are a few other elements that go into it, which is conversion on the page itself. So a product might sell really well when I search a certain word and that's where it's going to rank for. But it, even though it might, I might be able to get a lot of sales through it, if I'm searching another word, it won't rank, right? So it's not just based on generic sales, but it's based on association of a, a keyword, of a word, a term. And when people click through your, specifically in the context of books, okay, when they click through to your book and they purchase your book, then Amazon's algorithm is going to see, okay, every time I search startups and I find the seven day startup by Dan Norris, people buy, this is going to rank. We're going to keep this in the, you know, it's, it, they don't decide this manually. It's not like people are like, drawing it up on a board here, but their algorithm does that. That's how they've engineered their algorithm to say, okay, this is where it's going to be ranked because that's the conversion rate we're getting here. Okay. I mean, that's plain and simple. There's really not much more magic behind it than that. Um, and then there's a, there's a piece in there that has to do with kind of acceleration. So the faster something is selling and the better the conversion rate and the more it's accelerating in that manner. So the, if you get say 50 sales, then hundred sales, then 200 sales, then 500 sales, each day and each day you get higher and higher, Amazon's algorithm is going to predictably, they're predictively guess that you're going to be maybe at a thousand sales the next day. And so they're going to bump you up the charts because they're expecting and anticipating you're going to sell a lot more books. Get right. So now you're starting to think, okay, how can I manipulate? And maybe that's a bad word because again, use this honorably and ethically, but how do I engineer better results for my book to make sure one that that I can take advantage of that kind of acceleration factor of Amazon SEO, and then take advantage of the, the search, search words that will convert when people land on my book. So where do I start is probably the question you're wondering, because there's quite a bit here, and I'm hoping that I'm doing it in an organized manner, but, you, but I'll come around to things. So I'm gonna start uh, basically with how we do things at Insurgent Publishing when we launch books. We launch legitimate author books that are self-published or traditionally published, but I say legitimate because we're not just kind of doing the spammy 20-page uh, uh, Kindle books, right? Um, and you'll see those on Amazon, and they're horrible, but they rank so high because these guys you know, know how to rank using Amazon SEO and kind of take advantage of, of readers in a lot of ways. So I don't care about those books. I do care about the legitimate books. So those are the ones I'm going to show you how to do. And the way I'm going to start is by focusing in on um, the actual book sales page, then kind of working our way backward kind of from that end state. Um, to how we how we develop it in KDP, Amazon Author Central, how we use different tools to do keyword research, and how it all ties together. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, first, I think, to, to preface with um, some distinctions between keywords and categories and some other important things. Uh, there are two types of keywords. There's going to be the uppercase keyword and the lowercase keyword. And uh, when I say keyword, most of the time it's going to be lowercase unless I specify. Um, when I say lowercase keyword, I'm talking about terms phrases and words that people use to find what they're looking for. So those are the queries. That's like searching startup. That would be a ter that would be a, a, a term somebody might type in startup into Amazon to find a book on startups. Um, that's a keyword. Then if we go into the long tail of keywords, that's where you're doing phrases that are less searched. So startup is going to be a term that's searched probably quite a bit. And I'll show you the tools you can use to find that out. Then there's going to be the less searched terms, but that are more specific that are searched. And this is long tail. Okay. So long tail is like, if you were doing a chart, it goes like this. I, I don't have a graph for you, but if you don't know the term long tail, Google long tail, and you'll get a better idea. Um, and the point is when we talk about long tail, we're talking about the things that aren't searched quite as often, but are more specific. And so therefore, if they're more specific, chances are the person is looking for a particular thing. And if you can capitalize on that particular thing, guess what? You're the winner right? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So you want to take advantage of long tail keywords when you're 
um, organizing your book in Kindle. All right. So now what are categories? Well, categories are in Amazon KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. So when you, up, you, up, you upload your book, you'll be able to choose categories. And then this is also where the capital K comes in, by the way. Um, the capital K is keywords that you could put into Amazon KDP. You have a, can use about, I don't know, I think it's like eight or 10. I'll, have to, I'll jump in and double check and I'll show you in that in a second. But these are keywords that you can plug into Amazon the back end. You might be thinking, why would you do that? If you just can fill in the description and all these other things, why have a separate section for keywords? It doesn't really make sense. Well, the way Amazon does it still doesn't necessarily make sense to me, but they, this is how they design the system. Capital K keywords are useful for actually helping you be found in particular categories. So a good place for anybody to start with understanding keywords and categories um, and then lowercase versus uppercase keywords um, is the back end and KDP. But, uh, but I, before we get just to that, I want to start in the front end at the book, at the book level. So this is the final product. So the examples, I'm going to go through a couple different examples. Uh, the one I'm going to dig inside and, and mess around with is my own book because I'm allowed to do that. But I'll show you the outside stuff of the, what I've did with the books I've published and show you kind of how we've, we've set those up. But there are five particular areas you want to be concerned with when it comes to Kindle book publishing and and keywords okay um, and it's title subtitle description and then there's like a kind of maybe a bonus area here but uh, the author Amazon author central area which is kind of like a maybe a secret to some people but maybe not and then there's reviews so this is a book I'm going to be uh, showing kind of the inside and out of the stuff is notes from Seth Godin's revolution conference that actually doesn't rank very well on Amazon because the goal of it is actually as a lead magnet for my platform, TomMorkis.com, and I give it away free at, or I pay what you want on my site. Um, I just put it on Amazon so people could get a Kindle version of it as well. Um, so it was never meant to make money. It was always just, uh, here's the notes I took from Seth Godin's Revolution Conference. But I can show you what I did, like a little bit of the things I did when I started to kind of prep it for Amazon and stuff like that. But the real example I want to take you through, because it's a great example, is uh, Dan Norris's The Seven Day Startup. So I worked with Dan to to launch his book. And uh, this is a book that we launched last year. It's been out for over a year now. Um, it says actually right here, September 29, 2014. And since its launch, when it launched, it was a bestseller. It stayed there for several months um, and ranked, uh, it sold tens of thousands of copies in the first couple months. And since it's still sold thousands of copies every month, um, or oh, I think it sold over 10, excuse me, it sold over 10,000 in the first month and then it sold thousands of copies every month since. And so I think it's over 25 or 30,000 sales um, in the first year, which is pretty cool. And and most, when you consider that most books um, rarely break even $500 in profit, um, let alone, you know, maybe a thousand sales. So this is pretty good. It's a good example of a book that was well-written by a great author with a good platform. And fundamentally we did the Amazon, we did the SEO right. And so the key here is I'm going to walk you through the individual elements that are important. So the word we wanted to rank for with this book was startups. So makes sense, right? It's called the seven day startup. That's the title. Uh, you don't learn until you launch. So since we want to rank for startup, we wanted to have the word startup. It's somewhere in the title, either in the title or subtitle. So we have it in the title itself, the seven day startup. And um, that was, this is Dan's title um, and subtitle, but it worked out great. Um, but that would be a place where I would make sure I'd have like a specific keyword that would help me rank in a particular category. I would make sure that that is in the title or subtitle somewhere. Um, and that's not that hard to do. And I'll show you how, um, actually let me switch this over to the Kindle version and see if that makes a difference. Okay. So now we're in the Kindle version. So paperback and Kindle versions are generally the same, but they're designed a little bit different, which is just, it's kind of interesting, but, um, anyway, so the point is there's the title and then the subtitle and we're already ranking for a particular words. So I'm going to do control F and search startup uh, so that we can see the words and how often they're used. And this, by the way, is a good hack you can use if you're doing keyword research and checking out kind of rival or competitor books. So then the second, so then the first part is the title, the second part is the subtitle, then the third part is the description, which is right here. And you only get maybe five or six lines for that. One, two, three, four, five here. Um, that's not very many. Um, and so you have to click read more. But as you can see, when I click read more, look how often startups is mentioned organically. We're not st keyword stuffing here per se, but we are making sure that these are natural uses of the word startup. And we make sure that Amazon understands this book is, is about startups. 
we scroll down and then here's the bonus section uh, number four um, which is editorial reviews and um, and about the author which are both in Amazon Author Central which I'll show you in, in a second but look how often we have the word startup mentioned because that's what we want to rank for and I scroll down and sure enough look because we've used the word startup and startups it's ranking in startups and usually it's at like between I think three three to four it's been at for the past few months but there's always new competition um, but it fluctuates it was just at four oh, a week a week ago so I'm sure it'll bump back up but uh, so there it is ranking for startups in that category small business and entrepreneurship and I'm gonna go back and search those terms in a second but as I scroll down now look at the words used by reviewers startup 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 everything highlighted okay pretty cool stuff all right, so now let's go back and let's do a search for entrepreneurship and go back to the top and see where this is. So actually, we don't have any references to entrepreneurship in the, uh, in the description here, so we probably should do that. And then we'll use the word entrepreneur or entrepreneurship. So let me search entrepreneur real quick. So I'm spelling it right. So we'll do entrepreneur. So there we go. So entrepreneurs. Um, and then in the reviews again, we have more mentions of entrepreneur. And then in Dan's biography, and then again, that's a word that's often used when people are leaving reviews. So as you can see, it kind of makes sense that these are words that Dan is ringing for. And so now you see in the categories that Dan is obviously, if I go to startups, we'll see that, um, you know, Dan's book is right here. So, so what's pretty cool here is if you take a look at this, um, we have basically, um, Basically, we have uh, a couple of new books that just came on the scene. So Top 101 Growth Hacks. Um, I don't know how legit that is or not, but definitely like Zero to One is a very famous, well-written book by Peter Thiel. And then Eric Ries is another super famous author. Um, so this is a new one, Startup Action Plan. Um, my prediction is these, these will drop off, these two right here. And then you'll see Dan's book rise again. Um, and then, you'll, you know, so right here is, oops, I didn't mean to, to scratch it out. Um, I meant to circle it. So what's interesting is that in startups right here, right, we have Dan ranking number five. So this is important that if somebody winds up in um, Amazon's uh, and searching by this this categories and stuff like that, that it's in the top six. Because um, as you scroll down, there's less and less likely that somebody's going to pull the trigger on a book down here. Um, so let me go ahead and back up. So now let me go back to this book. And here's another place where actually this becomes relevant. Um, and so the same goes for any category where if you click on these, um, here it is number six. Okay. So again, that's going to help it increase. It's going to increase sales. Um, but if I go back to just Amazon in general and I search startups, so there we have Eric Ries. Then we have the startup owner's manual. Steve Blank is a super famous name in, in startups. So that makes sense. Zero to one by Peter Thiel again. Um, Startups, I don't know what this one is. Um, looks like it's brand new and they're doing some kind of 99 cents promo thing. So again, good SEO here. Growth Engines by Sean Ellis, another super famous name in, in startups world. Uh, we have Startup Expert, Get Ready. Again, I don't know what this is, but uh, but it's giving being given away free, so that's gonna rank because it's gonna increase conversion. Then we have Dan's. So Dan's book was normally ranking higher than this um, up here somewhere, but these things kind of shift around a little bit, but this is where it's really important because here's the deal. If I'm searching for something in Amazon from the home menu and I wind up on this page, these are probably the books I'm going to look at. So, and then here's another long tail keyword that I might search startup books, or actually let me do this. Just do this startup book. And here do we have the lean startup, the hundred dollars startup, a couple of the same ones that you've seen before. And you're, see, you're seeing that we're not actually ranking um, there for Dan's book. So if we wanted to go and change this, I would have the term startup book used in the description. And I would actually possibly use it in the capital K KDP. So now I'm going to jump into the back end. And since we're not, it would be awesome if we could work with Dan's book on the back end, but we're not. I'm going to work with my book, which is um, Notes from Seth Godin's Revolution Conference. And I'm going to show you some cool things uh, in Amazon KDP and where you can kind of adjust this stuff. And I'll give you an example, referencing Dan's, where I would type these things in and stuff like that, but I'll show you the inside of mine. So now I'm in KDP, okay? Um, Kindle Direct Publishing, um, and you have a few things. You have Bookshelf, Reports, Community, KDP, whatever. So I was on the Bookshelf, and I clicked through my book, uh, Notes from Seth Godin's Revolution Conference. 
excuse me. I'm not gonna get into uh, any of this stuff, just the SEO piece here. So the key here are you have um, uh, enter your book details and you have uh, the subtitle. So you have your book name, book subtitle, edition number, that's kind of irrelevant, um, publisher, whatever, description. So so what what's key here is I'm gonna mark out the spots that are key. Book name, that's where we want your, either in the book name or the, uh, the subtitle, we want a keyword scrolling down in the description. Um, and then as we go down, um, keywords. So these are where we're going to focus on, on, on terms, search terms and keywords and stuff like that. Right. So then we'll get into, uh, this category section in just a second, but starting up here again, as an example, um, so this would be the title of the book. This would be the subtitle showing up like it is on, on Dan's, uh, book, um, startups. Let's find it again. And here we go. You so there's the title, there's the subtitle. Here's the description piece. So the description piece going back to Amazon is right here. And uh, you have quite a bit of characters you can use. And there's no reason not to use as much space as you want. I'd also recommend if you can formatting it. Um, it takes uh, basic HTML and um, the uh, the instructions on how to use that are in Amazon's. Um, help desk or a, a FAQ basically they'll show you what it what what things you can use you can do like bold and italicized and headers and and bullet points and stuff like that and you can basically build that out in a WordPress page and then just copy and paste it and it generally works but I would you know just test it out first but that'll help people kind of draw their eyes to things so that that doesn't that won't help with the Amazon SEO but it'll help with the reader reading it being maybe a little bit more enthralled by the book so potentially higher conversion excuse me so then um, we have the keywords. So this is the capital keywords, even though it's not capital here. Um, and it's up to seven. So I was way off. I said 10. I don't know why I said 10. Um, and I think that's for just uh, products in Amazon. Um, but you can only use seven. Um, and then here we want to actually definitely max out seven. So what are the keywords we're using here? Well, for my book, I knew that people would be searching. Um, it's a book. It's a book on Seth Godin and notes from his conference. So he references his own books a lot. And so I knew that anybody who's going to be talking about tribes or being a linchpin um, are going to probably like this book. I know that any, obviously since it's about Seth Godin, that's going to be relevant here too. Um, and then these are the other major keywords, leadership, management, marketing. So this is a great example of actually like really bad keywords that I chose here. Um, this isn't so bad or it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be bad, tribes and linchpin, um, but I'm not really ranking for it. Um, and then leadership, management, marketing are all too general. And it doesn't actually help me get anywhere. So if I go back to this, let's see where I'm ranking. Um, I'm 87 creativity. That's cool. Um, I have 281 in entrepreneurship. So it looks like creativity is much less competitive than entrepreneurship. So maybe this is a good place for me to be. Um, but all that in mind. So what I would want to do is actually think through uh, ways that I could improve what, what the categories I want to be in. So obviously I wanted to be in creativity at first. So I actually, going back to this, um, I chose right here, creativity, and I chose entrepreneurship. And if I wanted to, I could probably improve the performance by changing this up. And so if you go in here, there's a lot of different things you can choose, but say we're in the business space, you don't want to just choose general. That means you're, if you choose one of the broader categories, then you're competing against everybody in the subcategories, which means you're going to rank lower by necessity, but the more specific you can get, and the more niche you can get, the higher you can rank in those those um, in those subcategories, and the less competitive it becomes. So if I go into an uh, accounting, for example, and I could find um, governmental accounting, I bet that is not a competitive space to be in. And if your book was relevant in that space, that would be a great one to choose. Um, other ones, so if we're doing uh, business communications, uh, meetings and presentations, so if you're doing something on how to present well, this might be a great place to put it. That might be a little bit more competitive. Um, then we have careers. We can get you know, more broken down to corporate finance, into development. And what's interesting, you'll hear e-commerce. A lot of these like don't, the categories aren't great. Amazon's categories are kind of archaic. So they don't really apply to like modern business stuff. But here's an example of what I did definitely wrong, having entrepreneurship, because that's on a higher level. I should get more specific than entrepreneurship. I should probably do, um, something else here maybe let's see finance where does that go um industries again that's probably not less not as relevant 
insurance, international. But as you can see, you can get pretty specific here. Here's one, marketing. So let's do, um, so let's say I did direct marketing and I wouldn't just guess something like this. So I'm gonna pause this piece right here. I'm gonna do that real quick, but I, I, I just wanna see that. Now I wanna go back to kind of, we're in here and this is where we can manipulate things, but this is where you gotta go back and forth between some tools. So now I'm gonna show you the tools that I use to do this type of research and, and how it kind of goes back and forth. So the first tool I use is Amazon um, itself. So anytime you type in a keyword, you're gonna be given a, uh, an actual result here. So if I type in, say I wanted to rank for startups, as I start to type this in, I'm gonna see that things are popping up here. Um, I don't know what this stuff is, but we have jump starter, startup. So let's do startup. And we have lean startup is one of the first things that pops up when you type in startup. Startup nation, startup owner's manual, startup vitamins, 100 startup, uh, startup of you. This means that these are things that are actually being searched by people um, in Amazon. If I went to Kindle, Kindle store, so now I'm in the Kindle store, startup. So I start typing in start and I'm getting a slightly different result. Starting over, starting strength, startup. So let's do startup. And I'm getting basically the same ones as what came into the main, main um, bookstore area or main, main Amazon store area. So this is gonna be an indication of where I wanna go. But I'm gonna search, remember I chose direct marketing. So direct marketing. What I wanna show you here real quick is, say I'm just gonna click on something random here, it doesn't matter. But I wanna go down here. Um, I don't care about multi-level. I wanna see something that's ranking for uh, direct, direct marketing. Um, so if I scroll down here, so anyway, I can't, it, it's not coming up right now, but the point is I would actually scroll around and, and check through these things. And what I'm looking for here is trying to find one of these sub sub categories that I can rank for that's either specified in Amazon, or if it's not specified, I kind of know generally where it is and I can use the word to rank for it. So for example, advertising might not be a category we can get into directly from Amazon's categories. It might be too, but just as an example, it might not be. But if I use the word advertising, then I might be able to rank for it. So this one's ranking for the advertising. Let's see if it's used at all. Um, and I don't see this one being used, but I do see it ranking here, which means this is probably something that she was able to choose in the categories region. So if I went back to the categories and I go to business, I'm guessing business, um, advertising and promotion. So yeah, there, you can choose that one directly. But let me see if I can pull up direct marketing because it's a good example or, or one of these other categories that's kind of uh, a little bit um, less uh, that you can choose right away. And I want to show you kind of the inside of how you can, you can be found in it using certain keywords, using a combination of choosing the right category and then choosing the right keywords right here. So here's a resource I put together for uh, Publishers Empire students. And again, if you're interested in joining Publishers Empire and getting content like this, go to publishersempire.com and you can join. But uh, this has a list of a few hundred um, things that we can rank for that you can't directly choose, but you have to use a specific keyword. So as an example, if I wanted to rank for MBA, um, I would need to choose that. Or startup is a good example where I, I can't necessarily, I, I would want to use the keyword startup or startups. Um, business, I would want to use the word business. Um, what else are interesting ones? Um, I mean, you know, I mean, you go down and you go into fiction and it's things like using the word angels and you'll, you'll wind up in a certain category. But these are ones, and this is a list compiled pulled from Amazon. I've, I've basically taken everything that they have in their, their backend stuff and compiled it into a list that's easily sortable for you and what regions it applies to. So again, if you want access to that, um, check out Publishers Empire. But that's where I would then basically choose the categories that I wanna rank in and then make sure that there's if there's subcategories I want to rank for and rank in, that I use those keywords, capital K, in the category section here. So I'm gonna cancel out of this, right here. So this is key that I would be putting right here so I could rank in those categories. And again, they have to be relevant and you have to think in terms of if somebody searched this word and or they were searching in this genre, or this niche, would they buy my book if they found it? Because conversions on, on the page, um, so page conversion rate is very important, okay? So now I wanna show you some more advanced tools. Okay, so that's like a basic stuff. You're using Amazon itself, typing in words that you're thinking about that might that people might be searching for your book. And then you're looking at certain people's categories and seeing what's ranking and what's not. And as an example, the category before we move on, 
is I, one of the things I always like to look for is where's the least competitive category that's relevant to what I'm in. So if I look at advertising and I say that the number one book here is this LinkedIn because it's on a 99 cent discount deal right now. So it's getting, getting a lot of sales at 99 cents. So it's going to rank high. And that's a great way to get yourself up the ladder, by the way. Um, and then I scroll down and I realize, look at this. It's only, it's only number 6,000 in the whole Kindle store. So it's, it's like 7,000. So if you wanted to beat this book, you would only have to get up to about 6,500 in all of Amazon, which only, which is off the top of my head. There's some Amazon calculators out there, Kindle calculators out there, but you're looking at maybe selling, I don't know, 50 copies, 50 to 70, and you're beating this book. So if you think you can sell 57 copies, then it would be a good thing to be into advertising. So you could beat this book, right? And then, and the beating the book is, is so you get this little thing right here this little ranking thing that says number one bestseller, little orange one. And so you show up in your category number one. Those are the two most important things. That's why we want to be bestseller. The other thing I want to look at too here is look at what are the other competitors. And I'm seeing that this is another competitor. And look at this. It's number 35,000 in the Kindle store. So you know what? The next business book I do, I'm going to make sure I rank for advertising because that you only have to sell maybe like 10 or 20 books a day, um, maybe even less. And you're going to be beating that, this book, which means you're going to be top of the charts. Okay, so this is a very, so this is a definitely a not competitive um, uh, category at all. Other, com there's certain categories that are super competitive in fiction, um, you know, romance and stuff like that. They're like hyper competitive. You have to be in the top 100 of all of Amazon to rank. But in these, if you only have to be in the top 30,000, it's not a bad place to be. It's a cool, it would be a good thing to get into this category. And that's what a lot of people who kind of pump out these books that look like they're self published kind of do to, to rank high and. I don't say, I don't know if this is good, but I'm just looking at these and I'm like, they look, a lot of these look self-published and I'm like, I wouldn't necessarily trust them, but they're in these categories because they know that if they somebody stumbles upon here, they're going to be ranking high. They want to get that little orange strip and they want to be high in this space right here. Okay. So those are the two, two keys here. So this is how we decide on categories. That's how we figure out which keywords to use so we can get in kind of subcategories that aren't necessarily selectable from Amazon. And so we're using kind of cross comparison of books in our, in our niche to see where ours should fit. And again, it's not cut and dry where it goes. So this is the first part. The second thing you want to do is use Google AdWords. And so, um, what I'm going to do is pull up Google AdWords here real quick and give you a brief breakdown of what I mean here. So if you search Google AdWords in Google, you'll come to google.com slash AdWords. So I'm going to click on that real quick and, uh, you have to sign in to use this. So all you have to do is just create an account or have a Gmail account or something like that. And it works pretty well. And then you're going to have some uh, stuff here at the top that uh, says home campaign opportunities. So we're going to do campaigns and we're going to create our own, our first campaign. And then what we have here is that, um, actually, excuse me, let me go back. That was the wrong one. So I clicked the wrong one. So let me go back home. Uh, actually, let's go to the tools. That's what I meant. Um, tools. Uh, and then we have a uh, keyword planner. Sorry, I got confused there for a second. So we got keyword planner. So then I'm going to hop into keyword planner. And the same thing that I do with Amazon, where I started typing in words that I was thinking about, I want to use Google AdWords because instead of just kind of typing in some words and seeing what shows up in Amazon, I'm going to, this lets me get really into depth about what I want to use. So what I would do is I would say search for um, new keywords using a phrase web starter category. So I'm going to say startups, okay, get ideas. And I'm going to see, it's going to show me the total volume and I'm seeing that it's in millions of searches every month, which means that's good. Um, and then it's going to show me ad group ideas. So these are kind of uh, phrases and terms. So startup idea gets 24,000 monthly searches, startup idea, business startup ideas. Okay. And it's growing startup loans, startup company. So these are all group ad group ideas. So let me go back to keywords and see what, what we find. And I see that startup business, startup, startup business, startup company, startup ideas, 14,000 searches. So startup has the most if that makes sense. Startups plural has less. That's important to know. Business startup has way less. So there's no reason to necessarily try to, uh, to search to be something that to, to rank for that, in my opinion, on Amazon per se, unless you're really going for that long tail. 
but something that might make more sense is startup ideas. It's kind of, you know, again, relative to how many times this is searched, that's maybe, you know, 10, 15% um, or 10% of the search volume. And so that's a decent long tail keyword. So it's impossible to know what's the perfect long tail keyword to look for. But looking at all these, you can start to get an idea. Lean Startup is searched a lot. But you know what? You're probably not going to rank for Lean Startup um, because there's already books on that topic. It's a whole brand. So I wouldn't mess with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to check out. Let's do business. Um, let's do this. Business. So I would do is maybe I do Startup Ideas. So maybe that's, maybe what I want to do is put in the, the subtitle for my book on startups is, you know, 101 startup ideas to get your business off the ground. And now I'm using different words, right? So let me go back here to keywords. So we have startup ideas that search 14,000 times a month. Uh, business startup ideas is, is in search too much, is, is search maybe a percentage of that. Um, startup business ideas. So again, Interesting thing to note here is what is the actual phrase that a human being is using? So this is bottom line is what I'm trying to show you is it's not just about the word. It's about the order of the words. So look at this business startup ideas versus startup business ideas. This one is searched 700 more times, um, which is uh, 30%. I don't know if I'm doing the math right, but 30% higher. The business startup ideas they're both long tail keywords they're not getting they're not getting very many um, monthly searches here but if you were to hone in on one long tail i would say startup business ideas for the bootstrapper or something like that right and then you're starting to get to something that is more relevant and that would be more useful startup ideas for 2015 so maybe how about startup ideas for 2016 if this is being searched this month that's a great long tail 2014 look at that probably not searched that that much anymore but 2016 is going to start getting searched so again, um, it's, it's, it's interesting that you can take advantage of these kind of trends um, and you can dig into what are the particular phrases that people are using, um, using Google AdWords. So using a combination of that in Amazon, you have a great, uh, great start. So then I wanna go to Google Trends and see where we're at with that. So that's another tool to use just to see how popular a term is. Um, and see, you can see how, how, how important is election 2016 in Google searches right now, right? Um, so whatever, and then it shows you kind of top top articles that are really popular right now. Most of it is irrelevant unless you're in the entertainment industry, honestly. But if you're doing business or you're doing something like that. But again, I, I'm just focusing on business. That's the type of books that I write and I, I publish the majority of. But this works just as well for fiction. You just have to be a little bit more clever and see where your book can tie in. But let's do um, startup. Let's see how often startup, the word startup, is being searched. It's trending down since 2000 early 2000s so the word startup isn't as hot anymore so let me see and what's interesting here is you can see it by region but obviously the word startup is way more popular in Singapore and Estonia and New Zealand than it is in the United States that's kind of sad for the United States that uh, that is not number one uh, being the home of Silicon Valley and everything but that just shows that these are players in the game that are probably catching up if people are searching these terms chances are it's be, you know it's because there's more startups happening so let me do another one I'm gonna do lean startup and I'm going to guess this has gone down as well. Oh, no, it's gone up a little little bit. Um, interest. No, I don't. It's tough to say. It's a little, it's a little, it's obviously a big difference um, between that because this is more specific. So let me go ahead and remove this one. Lean Startup has gone up over time. Well, that makes sense whenever the book was published and has become more mainstream. And then we can see here that, uh, we can see what headlines are happening. So this is long tail. This is where it looked like startup was going like this. Certain terms, certain long tail keywords are going up. This is a opposite trajectory of uh, startups in general. And look at all these references, lean startup events, lean startup, whatever, um, you know, all this different stuff on lean startup. So again, lean startup is one of those words where I might not want to, uh, to use it because it's a, it's a, it's a, I might even be, I think it's a trademark actually, but it's like, I think it's dominated by um, the people that write in that space, but I would want to look at other keywords. So maybe I would do startup business ideas. Let me make sure that that was the one we found here. Startup business ideas. So yeah, let's go back to trends. And I'm seeing that it's growing, which is good. 
So this would be a very long tail keyword that you could take advantage of. And it would be a great thing maybe to put into Amazon. So let's go back to Amazon. And let's go back to the main store. Startup business. Let's see if anything. Plan Chinese, Chinese level one textbook books. Interesting. So it's not really showing up here. And then here we go. Business ideas from a thousand ideas to one, the startup idea filter, business ideas, 100 short to make money in the new economy, perfect business idea, the business idea factory. Um, it's interesting. So you see what's already there and you can think, well, if I had the term startup business idea, I could potentially rank when somebody searches this. Uh, it may not be, it's, an, it's definitely a long tail keyword. So I'm not sure how useful it is, um, but it's one of those things to think about as you do keyword research, okay? The last tool I wanna show you is a AMZ tracker. And, uh, and this tool has been really great to use, um, in my opinion, for the books that I've launched. And uh, you have to pay for it per month, but if you're serious about publishing, you should probably have a, a subscription. So um, if you go to tommarkus.com slash uh, Amazon dash SEO, then you can click through and find this link. Um, and that'll be my affiliate link. And I have a few bonuses for people that use that. So if you wanna use it, go for it, use my affiliate link. Um, and have some additional resources on Amazon um, SEO and cheat sheets that you can use. But here's a look inside it. I'm not gonna show you how to use it right now. That's part of the bonuses as well as how to use it in some of the ways I use it most effectively. But bottom line is I have some books in here that I wanted to look at and see how are they ranking. Um, and so let me get to the books that I care about. So I was doing some, what I'm doing is competitor research right now. Um, that's why I have a lot of these different books. I just plugged this one in as, as my, own, my own book just to see um, how it was doing. And I want to see, well, what am I ranking for? And it looks like I'm ranking for Tom Morcus. I'm the, this is the number one book when people search Tom Morcus, which has a volume of 90. Okay, on Google. I could probably do better than that, so I have to work on that. As you can see, the word Seth Godin has about 27,000 searches, so a little bit more popular, with a rank of 22. So I'm so my, my book is number 22 when people search for Seth Godin. It's not bad. Remember how I put those keywords in there? Going back to this one, remember I said these weren't the best keywords, but I used Seth Godin, Tribes, and Lynchpin? Let me go back to AMZ, and I can see that Seth Godin, 22. Lynchpin, I'm 39. Godin, just blank, is 235. So that one, I'm not really competing on that one. I probably should just get rid of that and try some other stuff. Um, tribes, I'm over a, a 300. A lot of these, I'm just like, I should probably scrap the, you know, these were just other research ones I was researching, seeing, you know, what's the competition here. But this is the stuff I should hone in on and realize that I might be able to, to rank higher for these terms. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to go to the seven day startup. Oh, interesting. Just today it went from uh, five to six. So there was that uh, book that just came on the scene. That's the discount deal. And it just pushed everybody down by one, but it'll probably slip away. And this one will bump back up to five, five or four. But uh, it's been at four, as you can see, then it went to five, then it went to six. So it's actually decreased in rank um, just in the last day. It's gone down one. Um, and so here's the graph. And it was up, you know, see it's hover, hovers around three over time. So let me go ahead and that's the word startup. The volume is 22,000. It's not bad. Startup book. The volume is so small here that that's an irrelevant search then 110 is that's probably not worth your time. Um, and then it's a uh, small, I wonder if small business. So it's over um, 300 in small business. So this is one that I think we could actually rank for if we try by changing up the categories, maybe um, tweaking some of the keywords, um, updating the descriptions. And um, I, you know, even what you can do in Amazon is you can actually change titles and subtitles. So I might even just add an addendum to the subtitle if you want it. Um, that's a little shadier and it might be a little more confusing. The point is the book is still selling very well, but this is interesting to show where it's at right now. So, and this shows overall where it's at. So we're about 8,000, which is pretty good. Uh, my book is at 256,000, so that could use some work. Um, and then we're seeing just kind of where other books are at in terms of, so I'm doing research for business books and management books and stuff like that. So I'm able to kind of look at where the competition is and what they're ranking for. So in say I'm, I'm doing a book on management, I look at the first time manager and I say, managing people, mm, that volume is pretty small, but I might be able to crack it. 
this is has a volume of 90,000. Um, there's no way with a volume of 90,000 I'll be able to break one. But I bet with these smaller search terms, I could break this and I might be able to beat this person in the managing people space with the right terms, right? So again, AMZ Tracker is gonna help you figure out how to take all the, the stuff you've learned from doing your keyword research using Amazon and using um, uh, Google AdWords and then using Google Trends and just using the Amazon description filter here um, to kind of bring it down to something cohesive and see what your competitors are doing and then come up with um, additional keywords. So AMZ Tracker will help you do that as well. So that's kind of the really in-depth look at Amazon SEO guys. And I hope, you know, if you're into this stuff and you're interested in how to, how to publish the right way and get your stuff ranking, then I know this, you know, hour long ish instruction is going to be totally worth it for you. And so I, I hope so. So if you're looking for more in-depth tutorials like this, um, one-on-one -on -one help, uh, and small group coaching like this from me to help you with your books, um, to get them to rank and launch number one, that's what I do through Publishers Empire. So go to publishersempire.com and you can sign up right there. Um, I'm also going to be hosting some live webinars coming up here on how to launch a book to number one. And I oft, often go, go over a little bit of Amazon. The point is there's actually a lot more that you can do to influencer, influence SEO rank. Um, some hacks that you can use. I'll go over just a few of those real quick and then we'll wrap up. You can use kind of certain keywords. So use the keywords that your competitors are using. So number one hack, use the keywords that your competitors are using, but that aren't doing too hot so that you can bust out and beat them. Okay, so number one, so kind of do that competitive analysis, find out what they're using, um, using things like AMZ Track or Google Trends and stuff like that, and Amazon search engine itself and seeing where they fall and, uh, and, and leverage that keyword against them. You can have people buy your book alongside another book. So if you were coming out with a book, I might say, hey, suggest your book, say, tell everybody to pick it up and then say, hey, here's another book I recommend. I recommend picking up Seth Godin's uh, Lynchpin and uh, Tom Morcus's uh, notes from Seth Godin's Revolution Conference. And what I'm going to see is that uh, I used to have this open, but um, uh, let's say it was um, Tribes, actually. I don't, know. I don't know if it was Tribes, but one of these, then if, if people bought those at the same time, what's going to happen is you're going to start to show up right here. Okay, and that's really powerful. It's a good place to be. Oh, I was under the dip. So let me go to the dip. So I might recommend, hey, if you like, buy, buy my book and then also buy the dip. I think you'll get a kick out of it. And uh, mine was here just a second ago. I thought it was on the dip. It was on one of these Amazon, uh, um, uh, Seth Godin books. And it was one of the spots, like, you know, five or 10, which makes it powerful. It means people are going to pick it up. So it's a good place. It's a good place to be. Another hack is have people use the right keywords in their reviews. So if you can get people to leave honest reviews, you can give them some suggestions on topics to cover. Say, how did this help you with your startup? Or um, what were the things you learned about uh, building your startup? Or how, did this help you speed up the process of starting your startup or starting your small business? Right. So have them use the keywords in their reviews. And then always use keywords, capital K and keywords, lowercase k, um, appropriately. Make sure that they're the kind of things that if somebody lands on your page, that I'm not, I didn't rank for the, you know, the, the term vampire erotica and then they, they show up on my business book. So I'm not going to have a conversion because of that. So I'm not going to get the sale. So it actually doesn't make any difference that I rank for that. So remember, SEO, only, all the, I mean, fundamentally, the only reason it matters is that people find your book and buy it. So it's, you know, again, some of those things that I showed you, like advertising, if you're in a business space, it might be good to just show up in the advertising um, area and rank, rank in that area because it looks like it would be easy to take, um, to take advantage of that and to rank higher so you can get that number one spot. But beyond that, like beyond those kind of like little things that you can do to adjust a little bit, I wouldn't do anything too extreme. So those are kind of my pieces of advice on how to use this carefully. So again, if you guys are interested in more, sign up at tommarcus.com slash newsletter and you can jump in my newsletter where you'll get this stuff for free and a lot of stuff that doesn't make it to the blog. Um, and then if you're interested in uh, getting published, reach out to me um, or go through publishersempire.com. I, uh, I run the best self-publishing training platform in the world. And I also have some of the sickest guarantees, um, like a guarantee that you'll make X amount of income in the first 12 months after your launch, guarantee that you'll do a bestseller launch if you follow my process. You'll be surrounded by a bunch of other like-minded people who are doing great things in the space in the self-publishing space and the indie publishing space and the traditional publishing space. We have all sorts of authors that are in our group, which is pretty crazy. 
So that's what it's all about, okay? So if you'd like to join us, if you'd like to make sure your book's a bestseller, if you'd like to get more hands-on attention and this, these, these type of super detailed tutorials, um, as well as cheat sheets, checklists, swipe files, uh, all that stuff, check out publishersempire.com. It's constantly being updated. I run it myself. I manage it myself. I'm very invested in the people who work with me. So check it out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, this is basically Amazon SEO. It's Amazon Kindle SEO 101. No bull, um, no, 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 no stuff. This is all from experience. I've launched dozens of books. I played around and done keyword research for dozens of books. I've tested things like this. Um, so this is from firsthand experience. I'm not an internet marketer. I learned this from the aspect of being a publisher and somebody who learned the system from, from that level of, of publishing. So I don't do anything black hat. This is all legit SEO stuff and it's all honest and good. Um, anybody that's telling you otherwise of these things, um, or giving you additional advice, um, they may be lying or taking advantage of you. There's a lot of ways to make SEO seem sexier and crazier and more confusing than it is so that you, people will buy um, you know, your, your products or something like that. That's why I just want to make this video uh, free for everybody so that you get a chance to get a taste of what I provide as um, uh, the somebody who runs Publishers Empire and in my work there so that hopefully you can join us. Um, and then also just to clear the air of what actually makes good SEO for Amazon Books in particular. Because again, Amazon Books, not many people covering SEO in that regard um, and so if you really want to rank this is the way to do it okay so in summary book sales are what counts uh, the search terms that you use help people find your book so they buy your book you rank high in Amazon by selling a lot of books and you rank higher by selling on a tra trajectory upward okay acceleration is part of their formula Amazon's algorithm is predictive they're gonna guess that you're gonna be at the next spot so take advantage of that when you launch your book okay Take advantage of categories that aren't as competitive so that you only have to sell 20 books in a day to hit number one and get that little badge and then say, hey, I'm an Amazon bestseller or whatever you want to say. 37-time uh, Amazon bestseller because you were on there for 37 days or something. I don't know. Whatever whatever you want. Just be ethical um, and use it wisely. So I, could, I hope you guys appreciated that. Again, if you enjoyed this, go sign up at tomworks.com slash newsletter for more of my stuff. And if you want to join me and with some sweet guarantees, make sure your book is a uh, awesome book that that does crazy well then you should check out publishersempire.com that's it for today take care and if you listen to this you are the resistance